My name is Asia Sampson and today on Baptism Overland, I'm excited to show you the first few mods that I'm doing to our new rig, the Forerunner. This right here is a 2017 5th generation TRD off-road Toyota 4Runner. If you've been following my channel, don't worry, I didn't get rid of the Jeep. I'm not getting rid of the Jeep. I'm just glad that we now have two very capable vehicles, but it also kind of sucks because you know that we're not leaving this stock. You'll get to follow us on this journey, not only in the build of the Jeep, but now also in the build of the 4Runner. This is my wife's vehicle. Long story short, she had a Jetta, 218,000 miles, and was running okay, had its issues, but a couple weeks ago, she was driving home from work on a very dark road and ran over a deer. The deer was already dead, but it messed up the whole undercarriage uh, of her front end. And we can fix it, we can still get it running, but I don't like her coming home that late at night on a very dark road and not feeling safe. So we looked at different vehicle options and you know she wanted a forerunner this is what she's always loved so i said hey i will not complain if this is the vehicle that you want so did some shopping found this one has about 35,000 miles which is really good especially for a four year vehicle and you know that with the forerunners these things will last if you just take care of it so now i'm excited to turn this into an overland vehicle but right now, the first few mods that we're going to do are not really mods in that effect, but more so kind of just getting it ready for mods. There's a couple of things that I want to do just to kind of spruce up the look, give it some creature comforts and all that. So join me and let's get started. All right, the first thing we're going to do, plastic dip. All right, can we just all come to the collective agreement that the silver trim at the bottom of these four runners are ugly as hell? Like, I don't know, you might like them. I personally do not. I just think it ruins the look. In the future, I do plan on removing this whole middle area anyway and putting a C4 Fab bumper on it. I don't want a full width bumper on this thing, just enough because my wife is still kind of scared about hitting another dead deer again. So I told her, let's get you a steel bumper and you'll run right over them. But we're gonna replace that eventually but for now we're going to use the go-to that everyone loves to use whenever they want to black something out which is plasti dip what's awesome about this product is you can spray it on and if you don't like it you can peel it right off i don't know how it'll hold up against debris and stuff some people say that it scratches it up and you'll eventually have to respray again later but it's a good temporary solution for getting rid of this silver trim and i might also go ahead and do the emblem up here and then obviously we will do the back also I think it'll just give it a nicer and more blacked out cleaned out look I will go ahead and mask this just so that it's a lot easier to control where the overspray is but what's good about this is wherever there's overspray you can just again peel it right off and you'll only be left with the areas that you want painted <laughs> All right, next thing we're gonna do is gonna upgrade her headlight bulbs. We're gonna go from the incandescent that's in there now into LEDs, which are much brighter, much better than the ones that are stock. For that, we are going with Last Fit. These are the two that I bought. One is for low beam, one is for high beam. Should be a pretty easy install. It's simply just replacing the bulbs that are in there.
Sticking with better visibility, now that we upgraded the headlight bulbs to LED bulbs, which are much, much brighter than the stock, the next thing we want to tackle is the fog lights. The fog lights on the Forerunner are not that great, and I knew that I wanted to upgrade them to something much brighter and much more higher quality. And for that, the Dio Dynamics Stage 3 3 inch LED pod. As you know from my previous videos on the Jeep, I put the Biodynamic Stage Series 12 inch fog light bar, which are awesome. They shine super bright, nice and amber, and that's kind of why I want to stick with the same company on the Forerunner. Great, great light at a very amazing price point, coming in at around $200. Inside, you got two boxes. In the first box, you get your mounts and also your plugs. Here is the mount that will basically go on your factory mounts that are on the Forerunner now. You also get your Deutsch connectors that will connect the fog lights to your factory wiring so you don't have to cut or splice or do anything. And then obviously you get your bolts and some instruction manuals. In the second box, you get your actual lights. This will fit perfectly in the fifth generation Forerunner. It was made specifically for that. And I like that on these, they're much more yellow. On my fog light bar that I got from Diode Dynamics, they're a bit more orange, but I really, really like the yellow styling more than the orange styling. So these will just look really good on the front versus the factory fog lights that are there now. Super easy to install. All we got to do is remove the old fog lights, put the mounts on there, plug these to the back like so, plug this to the factory, and we're pretty golden. Okay, so we're on the passenger side of the Forerunner. In order for us to get access to the fog light, we just need to peel back the cover that's back here, and that's really pretty easy to do. There are just three 10 millimeter bolts here and then one down here, and then there's also a clip over there that you need to be able to pop off and you just need some sort of screwdriver or a popping tool and once you take all those things off you can peel this back you'll have access to the inside there is also a shroud that covers the fog light on the passenger side and that's just easily removable by pressing in the sides and pulling it out on the other side for the driver side there's no shroud there so you'll actually have access to it much much easier Okay, so here's the OEM fog light that came out of the Forerunner. The Diodynamic fog light was created specifically for the 5th Gen Forerunner, so when you go to install it, just make sure that they're orientated the same way. As you can see, one side is longer than the other, so when they go in, it has to go in the exact same way as the OEM one did. Otherwise, they're not going to fit. How you do that is you add the bracket. This is the bracket that comes with your Diodynamic kit. And it's basically an exact match to the Forerunner one, where one side is longer than the other as well. To put this bracket on is really quite easy. There are two slots in here where you're going to drop in the nuts. So just drop in the nuts in there. And then put the bracket on, put in the bolt with the washer. And those slots in there actually hold the nuts in place so that you can screw it in a lot easier. Okay, so one side is done and this is the passenger side. Now we're just going to do the same on the driver side. Drop in the nuts. Make sure they're orientated opposite. Washer, bolt. All right, so there you go. The mounts have been put on the fog light, and the way these mounts work is they just slip into these slots uh, that's inside your bumper, and then on the other side is where you screw it in. So there's no need to screw anything on this side. They just slide into a slot and screw that in. Let's go ahead and put the connections on now, and we're good.
All right, so moving on to some creature comforts. When we bought the Forerunner, my wife said to me that she needs a way to mount her phone. It's not really a mod. There's tons of products out there to mount your phone, but I knew that we would probably want to grow this system one day where we can mount more than just one phone, mount an iPad, mount all the other stuff that we might need overlanding. So rather than just getting her just a standard phone holder, which you can get anywhere, I decided to go with RAM mount. RAM mount makes an amazing system. This is the X grip and basically this will hold the phone. It just opens like this and collapses. I went with this because many of the holders out there does not accommodate the fact that we have cases on our phones as if we're just walking around with our phones unprotected. This however will allow us to use her phone even when there's a case on it and my wife she uses her phone as a wallet as well. So she has the kind of case that has all of her cards and driver's license in it. And it's hard to find holders that will accommodate that. But the x -Grip RAM mount should work really well. Um, I know that a lot of people have used this, especially when they have cases on their phone. This is the track system. You basically buy this track right here. We will mount this to the dash. And then this locks in place by sliding it in and then locking it in. I will show you, but what's good is that we can grow this later. So for right now, we have this mount that will sit in there and then later we can add more mounts and just build on this system without having to buy so many different parts that will fit everywhere. We just now have one track system that will accommodate this. So as far as the RAM mount, the plan is to install this RAM mount track bar up here. That way it'll allow us to put different devices but I don't know if there's anything back there that will prevent me from screwing this down up here. And the only way to find that out is to remove all of the electronics here. And that should be pretty simple. This just pops out by pushing in on both sides, removing that, unclipping a couple things. Then I'm, I'll be able to unscrew some bolts here and then remove this from the dash. And finally, rounding out the first mods I'm doing to the Forerunner, WeatherTech. I know, it's not really a mod in that sense, the way we know it, but this is one of those things that we also overlook. Get something like this, protect the carpeting, don't use the stuff that they give you with the vehicle, the standard floor mats, because those things, after a while, they just start to wear down. This will help protect it from spills. This will help protect it from wear and tear. I have never owned a vehicle and not put WeatherTech on them. So let's put these in. That's it. And we'll be done. Right, that's it those are the first few mods that I am doing on the forerunner now I know before you start commenting they're not really mods in a sense of what you're used to seeing on my channel but I think this video was just 
a way for me to introduce the new ride to the Baptism Overland family. I'm very excited to see where this is going, the kind of journeys it will take us, and the evolution of this thing from stock to what I am hoping to be a very, very capable vehicle that will just allow me to spend more time with my family, whether that's in my Jeep or in the 4Runner. Either way, the most important thing is being out there and exploring. And you know, I hope that you too can continue to join us in this journey. Follow us as I continue to build up these rigs, both the 4Runner and the Jeep. Follow us on all of our trips and see what we're up to and get involved in some of the discussions that we're having on the channel. So if you aren't following us already, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like this video, and don't forget to follow us also on Instagram at Baptism Overland. My name is Asia Sampson, and I will see you next time.